Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, dear students, uh, the ISP staff and the guests, uh, welcome to the Virtual World International Student Project Autumn 2022. This is a project we have started last year by combining two separate, separate modules together. TU Dublin was delivering its own module in Virtual World and Chai University, as Chai University, we were delivering our own module. So we came together, uh, collaborated, and we collaborated with Whole Brain Health, a, a nonprofit organization from USA, to come up with a totally new module uh, where we have two groups of students from Ireland and Turkey coming together to the virtual world and work together. So this event is the final event of this 12 weeks course. And this 12 weeks week course, during that course, uh, all the students are introduced to Second Life as a virtual world or a metaverse platform. And they learn how to operate here in virtual world. They work as international teams and virtual teams. And they learn and investigate about sustainability while doing all these things. So this is a very challenging work for students because it's a very new platform for them. They got introduced just 12 weeks ago and they are doing their final presentations today with us uh, tonight. Um, the sustainability is one of the very trendy and hot topics today. That is why we choose this topic as the main topic in this course. We have given lectures about that during the 12 weeks. We have uh, experienced immersive 3D platforms where they learn about the ecosystems. And also uh, they have learned how to build here and how to do presentations in 3D environment. As a result, you will see tonight or this evening for us, which is uh, morning for the US uh, participants, uh, we will see the result of this work. The uh, sustainability we, is divided or built on three pillars, which are the economy, uh, society, and environment. So the teams are assigned in three pillars as well. Each pillar has two teams assigned to it. So we will, we will see two teams from environment, two teams from society, and two teams from economy tonight. Hello everyone, I'm the second group leader of team, I'm Gamze. I will introduce you to my teammates, Beyza, Nidanur, Tolga, Arafat, Jacob and me. Now, our first speaker Beyza will tell you about affordable and clean energy. Nida, I'm in a green group. Uh, I have a group mate, she is Gamze. Uh, our topic is clean water and sanitation. Uh, firstly, I'm going to present it and uh, Gamze will present it after me. Uh, I want to talk about safe water in the world wild. Uh, three of five billion people worldwide live without safely managed waters and sanitation. Uh, uh, we have the science here and now we just need funding uh, for the clean water. This is a huge obstacle because as we know governments like to spend money on the things like war instead of making sure everyone has clean water. The UN explains Clean water is a basic human need and one that should be easily accessible to all. There is a siphon fresh water on the planet. However, due to poor investment and planning, every year millions of people, most of them children, die from this uh, with water supply and hygiene also. What can you do about it? Civil society 
the organizations should work to keep governments accountable in spent in their uh, water research and development and promote the inclusion of the women, young and children. Uh, you can get involved in the World Water Day and World Toilet Day campaigning that aim to provide information and inspiration to take action hygiene issues. That's it, uh, Gamze. I will take over the conversation here now. Now I will tell you the targets. Six point one by two thousand thirty ensure universal and equitable access to safe and affordable drinking water for all. Two point um, six point two by two thousand thirty ensure access to educate and equitable sanitation and hygiene for all and end open depiction with special attention to needs of women and girls and people in vulnerable situations. 6.3 by 2030 improve water quality by reducing pollution, eliminating dumping and minimizing the release of hazardous chemical and materials, helping the preparation of untreated wastewater and significantly increasing recycling and safe reduce globally. 6.4 by 2030 achieve sustainable withdrawal and supply of fresh water to significantly improve water use efficiency across all sectors and to address water shortages and significantly reduce the number of people suffering from water scarcity. 6.5 by 2030 implement integrate water resources management at all levels including cross-border cooperating as appropriate. 6.6 .6 by 2012 protect and restore educate uh, ecosystems including mountains, forests, wetlands, rivers, aquifers and lakes. 6.8 by 2030 expand international cooperation and capacity building support to developing countries in water and sanitation related activities and programs including water harvesting Desolation, water efficiency, wastewater treatment, recycling and re uh, re reuse technologies. 6.B Support and st uh, strength the participation of local communities in improving water and sanitation management. 
to do alone, you might think, yes, it is important. Every step you take, no matter how small, it protects our plant and our water. Uh, hello everyone, uh, I am Toga. I will talk about uh, sustainable development goal on five uh, life on land. Uh, life on land uh, protects, restore and promotes sustainable use of uh, terrestrial ecosystems. Uh, sustainable man managed forests uh, combat uh, desertification uh, and health uh, and restore land uh, degradation and health biodiversity loss. Uh, a flourishing life on land is the f foundation uh, for our life on this planet. Uh, we are all parts of the planet's ecosystem and we have caused uh, severe damage to its uh, deforestation, uh, loss of natural habitats and land degradation. Uh, promoting a sustainable use of our ecosystems and uh, preserving biodiversity is not a chaos. Uh, it is the key to our own survival. Um, the, the targets uh, everyone can help to uh, make sure that we meet the global goals. Uh, use these 12 targets to create action to protect and restore life on land. Uh, co commerce and restore terrestrial and freshwater ecosystems. Uh, by 2020, uh, ensure the commerce, conservation, uh, restoration, and sustainable use for uh, terrestrial and inland uh, freshwater ecosystems and their service. Uh, in particular, forests, uh, wetlands, mountains, and drylands, in line with obligations under international agreements, uh, and take urgent action to end poaching and trafficking of protected spice of uh, flora and uh, fauna, and address both demands and supply of illegal wildlife production. Uh, trans immersive alien space uh, on land in water ecosystems. Uh, by 2020, introduce uh, measures to prevent the introduction and significantly uh, reduce the impact of uh, in invasive alien species on land and water ecosystems and control of and educate uh, the priority species. Um, that was my presentation. Uh, presentation. Thanks everyone for listening. Hi there. Uh, I am Cinematic Overlord. So, what I will be talking about is climate action. So, you may be asking, what is climate action? What What does it mean? So, climate action refers to the efforts taken to combat uh, combat this uh, issue that we have in this world right now called climate change. And you know, climate change. Uh, some people might say, um, you know, it's it doesn't affect us, or it's not something directly that affects us because we look around to other parts of the world, and then we see floods in Pakistan, deforestation in uh, Brazil, um, landslides in India. So many different problems like that. Um, but actually, in fact, uh, the global temperature, uh, which affects all of us, is increasing. For example, this time we saw in the UK a record of 40 degrees in summer that is unheard of in Europe so uh, what can we do to com combat this that is that is what my topic of climate action that is what it speaks about so as it says in you know, you know um, we see governments and systems saying you know we can be the change individually we can be the change um, but I came across a study that says it doesn't matter how much we try to for example uh, carbon footprint from the devices. If we decided not to use devices again, uh, us as individuals, it still would only not even contribute to 0.01% of the carbon footprint that happened in the world. So that's when we realized it, it, us as individuals, we can help 
to in taking climate action, but it also comes down to the system that we are part of, this feedback loop that we are also part of. And we are part of the system that is put in place by uh, multi-billion companies, the governments who um, who use um, and do things that actually affect the world more than we do ourselves. So then, uh, uh, sorry, can you hear me? Okay, uh, just make sure. So as individuals, we need to push uh, uh, push uh, the government, the companies, the people in the higher-ups that are around us. We need to make our voices heard. Um, we, we can do the things that we do anyways, as reduce water, water usage, uh, re recycle and all that, but we need to get the systems on top of us. We need to get them to um, be just as um, worried about this issue that the whole world faces. As you can see, this is the chart that shows the temperature going up over the past 10 years from 2011 to 2021. So, us as individuals, we might not be able to do something, but we can speak out, make our voices heard. Because there, people have been saying for 20, 30 years that climate change is a thing. So we need to make our voices heard and make sure that there is a push for global climate action from everyone because the world is owned by every single one of us the past the present and the future and it is only if we all work together that we can bring a change and uh, that is it from me thank you for listening hello everyone my name is Reza Sakam today I will talk about clean and affordable energy which is seven sustainable development goal Before mentioning clean and affordable energy, I would like to mention sustainable development goals. What is sustainable development goal? The sustainable development goals, also known as the global goals, consist of 17 objectives which were adopted by the United Nations 20, in 2015. They aim at improving the planet and the quality of human life around the world by the year 2030. Sustainable development goals are not poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality, education, gender equality, clean water and sanitation, clean and affordable energy, decent work and economic growth, industry innovation and infrastructure, reduce inequalities, sustainability and communities, sustainable consumption and production climate action, life below water, life on land, peace and justice, partnership for the goals. There are some facts that we should consider for clean and affordable energy. One of them is that 3 billion people rely on wood, coal, charcoal or animal waste for cooking and having. Another one is that energy is the dominant contributor to climate change, accounting for around 60% of total global greenhouse gas emissions. The other fact is that since 1990, global emissions of carbon dioxide have increased by more than 46%. Another one is that hydropower is the largest single renewable electricity source today, providing 16% of world electricity at competitive prices. It dominates the electricity mix in several countries developed, emerging or developing. Last one is that bioenergy is the single largest renewable energy source today, providing 10% of world primary energy supply. Let's move on the targets linked to the environment. Target 7.1 by 2030 ensure universal access to affordable, reliable, and modern energy services. Target 7.2 by 2030 increase sustainability, the share of renewable energy in the global energy mix. Target 7.3 by 2030 double the global rate of improvement in the energy efficiency.
Target 10.A by 2020 enhance international cooperation to facilitate access to clean energy research and technology, including renewable energy, energy efficiency, and advance and cleaners for fuel so technology, and promote investment in energy infrastructure and clean energy technology. Target 10.B by 2030 expand infrastructure and upgrade technology for supplying modern and sustainable energy services for all in developing countries, in particular less countries, in part, uh, developed countries, small island developing states, and landlocked developing countries, in accordance with their respective forms of support. There are some contributions that we can uh, make to so sustainable development school. These are turn off your air conditioning, especially for sleeping, open a window or use a fan, switch off your appliances at the socket, turn off the lights when you are not using them. Buy rechargeable electronics, don't buy or use one of batteries, use solar energy resources, install solar panels in your home for your heating and electricity, use solar energy technology, uh, radio, charger, lights, is to find the goal, um, seven, charity you want to support any donation, big or small, can make a difference. These are my references. If you have further questions, you can uh, search on these sites. Thank you for listening. First of all, hello everyone. I'm Ijlai. Today, I will inform you about water and sanitation, one of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, first, the clean, accessible water for all is an essential part of the world we want to live in. There is enough, uh, there is enough fresh water on the planet to achieve this. But due to poor economy or poor infrastructure, millions of people, most of them children, do each year from disease associate with inadequate water supply sanation of the hydro. Water scarcity, poor water quality and inadequate sanitation negatively impact food security, livelihood, shoes and education opportunities uh, for poor families around the world. The world is affecting some of the world's poorest countries, worsening hunger and malnutrition. Their targets are 6.1 by 20, uh, 2030 20, ensure universal, universal and equitable access to safe and affordable drinking water for all. 6.2 uh, 2030 20, ensure access to, access to educate and equitable uh, sanitation and hygiene for all and open definition with special attention to the needs of women and girls and people in vulnerable situation. 6.3 By 2030 improve water quality by reducing pollution, eliminating dumping and minimizing the release of uh, hazardous chemicals and materials having the proportion of un treated wastewater and significantly increasing recycling and safe use of the world. Uh, 6.4 uh, by 2030 achieve sustainable withdrawal and supply of fresh water to significantly improve water use efficiency across all sectors and to address water shortages and significantly reduce the number of people suffering from water scarcity. Uh, 6.5 six um, six by uh, 2030 implement to integrated water resource management at all the levels, including cross border cooperation and approach.
6.6 by 20 20 000, 20 uh, 2000 protect and restore educating ecosystem including mountains forest wetlands rivers aquifers and lakes 6.8 by 2030 expand uh, international cooperation and capacity building support to developing countries in water and sanitation related activities and programs including water harvesting desalination water efficiency vast water treatment uh, and use technology uh, 6.b support and strengthen uh, the participation of local communities in improving water and sanitation management. What can we do? Civil so what can we do? Civil society organization uh, should work to keep governments accountable, invest in motor research and development, and promote inclusion of women, youth, and indigenous in the genus communities in water resource governance, generating awareness of the, these rules and turning them into action will lead to win win results and increasing sustainability and integrity for both human and ecological systems. You can also get involved in the World Water Day and World to uh, Toilet Day campaigns that aim to provide information and inspiration to take action on hygiene issues. That's all I have, I have to say. Thanks for listening. Um, I, hi, I am Yara. I am going to introduce accessible and clean energy. I am um, starting. Uh, accessible and clean energy, the sustainable development goals aims to provide accessible, reliable and sustainable energy for all. Um, this goal is about ensuring access to clean and affordable energy. It is crucial for the development of the agriculture, commerce, communication, education, health and transportation. Lack of access to energy hinders economic and human development. And data shows that the world continues to move towards sustainable energy goals. However, the current pace of progress is insufficient to reach target 7 by 2030. Large inequalities mean in access to modern sustainable energy. Um, Policy support and the support of government and private capital for clean and renewable energy are required, um, particularly in developing countries to achieve energy and culminating goals. And what can we do? Um, countries should invest in renewable energy and emphasize energy efficiency in order to switch to accessible, reliable, and sustainable energy systems. Business can protect ecosystem by using and developing hydroelectric resources, supplying bioenergy and electricity demand for, from renewable sources. Employers can reduce the need for transportation by making more use of communication technologies, and they can plan to travel by train. It requires less energy instead of priceless, such as cars and plants. And um, that's all I have to say. And my friend Kenan will tell the rest. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm Kenan. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the targets about our topic. <clears throat> the first one about target 7.1, universal access to modern energy. By 2030, ensure universal access to affordable, reliable, and modern energy services. 7.2. Increase 
global percentage of renewable energy <clears throat> by 2030 increase the share of renewable energy in the global energy mix target 7.3 double the improvement in energy efficiency by 2030 double the global rate of improvement in energy efficiency target 7.4 promote access to research technology and investments in clean energy by 2030 enhance international cooperation to uh, facilitate access to clean energy research and technology including renewable energy energy efficiency and advanced and cleaner fossil fuel technology and promote investment in energy and clean energy technologies seven seven point five expand and upgrade energy services for developing countries by 2030 expand infrastructure and upgrade technology for supplying modern and sustainable energy services for all in developing countries in particular least developed countries small island developing states and landlocked developing countries in <clears throat> accordance with their respective programs of support and i'm just gonna keep going <clears throat> what can we do by organizing events and meetings we can talk to people about these goals and raise their awareness thank you so much for listening hello i i am bonhead and i was looking at sustainable development goal number 13. this goal seeks to implement the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change commitment to achieve a climate neutral world by mid-century to limit global warming to well below 2 degrees Celsius with an aim of 1.5 degrees Celsius compared with pre-industrial times. It also aims to strengthen countries' resilience and adaptive capacity to climate-related natural hazards and the resulting disasters with a special focus on supporting least developed countries. So today, uh, global 2.5 of our global emissions come from air travel, and 12% of our global emissions come from industry. Um, Second Life can help us reduce our emissions related to air travel by acting as a platform for international business meetings and social interactions, um, while maintaining strong relationships. Uh, it can also help us redu uh, reduce our travel time associated with interactions by by meeting virtually. We can begin to remove physical boundaries to coordinations and allow for a better education on environmental sustainability. Second life in the metaverse can also help us lower our industrial emissions by the use of digital twins, which are representations of real world products that can be used for testing and analysis. Thank you. Hi, I'm Gabby, and I'm presenting one of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals for Light Below Water. And the goal for Light Below Water is to conserve and sustainably use the world's ocean, seas, and marine. It has different targets such as reduce the marine pollution, restore ecosystems, and regulate sustainable fishing. And the reason for this is because ocean is our top support for the world providing water and food. It covers 75% of the earth, providing jobs for over 3 billion people. Water pollution occurs when substances are released into the subsurface, groundwater, lakes, and oceans. 
and therefore we must take action to help prevent polluting our oceans as it has many negative effects on ecosystems and humans and animals health. Thank you. Hey, I'm Sherox, um, speaking via Bonehead um, today. Um, life on, uh, I was looking at life on land. Um, our planet's resources are depleting. Uh, with demand we place upon it, our sea levels are rising and with that our earth's temperature. As a result of these habitats are endangered and going extinct, our relationship with nature is non-existent and we need to remedy this fast. Canvas we call Earth is finite and we cannot continue to invade and destroy habitats and ecosystems we depend on. Furthermore, we need to co-exist with them for our benefit and for their benefit and for our own. Uh, on one of our field trips, Toya, um, this semester we visited an area which is uh, studied and rebuild habitats uh, in an attempt to educate and learn from different regions throughout the world. It was a great experience to see how these habitats occurred uh, and what I can what I can do to learn from them, what to look out for and their benefits that go along with them. Um, it was this way of thinking and rebuilding I began to think how an Irish habitat would look in this environment. So I conducted my own research on habitats around my area using the skills uh, I have developed in architecture to record and sketch my findings. The wetlands was the first location observing the trees, shrubs and animals and, con and concluding that this is a rich ecosystem in its own right with an abundance of life serving as well as filtration system for the river which, run which runs alongside. I know. Further down the river there was a small wooded area, again using the same process of recording uh, as before, I carried out my investigation, finding trees like willow, ash, birch, and eucalyptus, each of which contribute to the ecology of the area. My final case study took place uh, off the river and further up the valley, although I couldn't see any of the animals I was trying to record. Uh, so I made assumptions depending on other recordings, um, like Scott's Pine, which are native red squirrel, low brambles, which attract a wide range of insects, low flying and non flying. Doing this kind of research helped me imagine what an Irish habitat might look like within Second Life. Um, that was my uh, slides. I apologise, my slides aren't up. Um, technical technical difficulties, but that's uh, routine. So thank you all very much for listening. Good afternoon, everybody. I think my classmate has a problem with the computer. Sorry for that. I am Ikira Suda and the part of Golden Team, which is complemented by Karen, Lizaveta, Tuche, Yaran, and Balaji. Uh, this course is about how does Second Life measure up in terms of sustainability and responsible practices. And first of all, I will give you an introduction of what economy and sustainable economy is. Economic is the social science that studies the factors which determine the production, distribution, and completion of goods and services. The ultimate goal of economics is to improve the living conditions of people in their everyday life. Its fundamental purpose is to organize resources such as labor and raw materials in order to produce goods and services that create well-being. So, an ideal sustainable economy provides for the greatest amount of general well-being with the least amount of resource use and environmental harm. To be truly sustainable, the overall demand for natural resources must be less than the nature's renewable supply of resources. <sighs> Second Life is a digital platform that enables the users to have income still object creating the land at creation. The basis of this economy is that reasons that is users as opposed to Linden Lab can buy and sell services and virtual goods to one another in the free market. Services include camping, working in stores, custom content creation, and other services, virtual goods include buildings, vehicles, devices of all kinds, animations, 
clothing, skin, hair, jewelry, and other words. To lend them dollars in Second Life, one must find customers who are willing to pay for the services or products that can supply, just like in real life. Because of this excess of virtual lands, there is an active virtual real estate market. Originally, all lands come from London Lab, which is part of the pricing and the revenue stream for them. But after that, it is bold and sold much like real life real estate. Mainstream media has reported on Second Life residents who earn large incomes from the Second Life real estate market. In addition to main economy, some residents receive a small weekly spend depending on the kind of accounts they have and when they join Second Life. There are also the ritual equivalent of minimum with jobs and charitable organizations that try to introduce new residents to the consumer economy. Thank you for listening. There is Lisa's side. Hello everyone, my name is Elisaveta and I would like to tell you today about economic problems in Second Life. The virtual world Second Life has its own economy and a virtual token called Linden Dollars. In Second Life economy users uh, called Resistance buy and sell to each other uh, directly using Linden, which is a closed loop virtual token for use only on Second Life platform. Linden dollars have no cash value and cannot be exchanged for cash value with Linden Lab. The basis of this economy is that resistance can buy and sell services and virtual goods to each other in a free market. Services include camping, shopping, user-generated uh, content and other services. Resistance of Second Life is most cases do not have a government. Thus, many government functions are not required. On the other hand, there is a, always a need for dispute resolution. The building owner sets the rules and can simply kick or ban and residents they wish, uh, with or without reason. Some groups of people in Second Life have created small political structures. For example, they can join together, purchase property on behalf of the group. Large companies buy lands in Second Life for promotion. For example, World Giant IBM bought several islands in Second Life. According to the company, for them, these islands are a platform for experiments, a place to exchange ideas and work on projects. For example, Nike and Puma will present the latest collections for the players. Anything you like in the Second Life store can be bought with home delivery in real life, receiving a 15% discount. Of course, Second Life is used as suspicious by many. Uh, Insightly, experts argue that the economy of the game is a soap bubble, uh, inflated by the media and developer himself. They also talk about the lack of guarantees acceptable of serious investors. So, according to the agreement that every resistant of Second Life sign, real estate and all virtual values even those bought for real money, can be deleted from the services at any time. The question of withdrawing money outside the game remains open. The fact is that in Second Life, as in many games, there is a danger of cheating. Recently, the tax authorities have become interested in the Second Life economy. Thus, the tax uh, committee of the US Congress has already launched an investigations into a virtual world. Lastly, I would like to tell that Second Life laid the foundations for a new virtual economy. This is a world that, as it turns out, allows you to earn good money without much investment and special skills. It's all about the economic principles of Second Life, which are practically no different from those that exist in real life. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Sehan. I would like to welcome you all to our presentation. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about economy in Second Life and how to improve this economic system. In Second Life, environment, the main economic component in, is Linden coins. These coins help users to buy landscapes or avatars. Also, users can produce items such as avatars, clothing or landscape, and sell these items ex exchange of Linden coins. 
and make profit from these coins. Today, one Linden coin worth 0.0031 US dollars. In Second Life users, these coins cannot make profit with Linden coins. Right now, but in near future, with the Im improvements of economic system and usage of blockchain technology, in SL, Linden coins can become crypto money exchange coin like Send and Mana. Thank you for listening. Um, let's talk about uh, what causes problems of economy and what are the solutions. Reduction of production resources creates scarcity. If demand increases while supply increases, the price decreases as a result of the same-sided effects on the price. If demand increases while supply decreases, the price increases as a result of the same thing. If everyone take what they need, um, scarcity can disappear. Two, redu reduction the demand for the resource. Thus, the product used comes to lower competition level. Third one and the last one, power struggle between producers and consumers. This power balance must be achieved. In Second Life, there are producers and consumers. There are many professions here. The balance between the producer and the consumer should be maintained as the real world. Thus, it would have realized its practice in the real world here. Second Life has a sustainable economy because in this technological world paired with the real world. Real people create and analyze their profiles and workplaces here. It can eliminate social and environmental problems under the name of economic interest in the environmental and surgical fields. Thank you for listening and your attention. I talked about what causes the problems of economy and what are the solutions. Reduction of production resources creates scarcity. We follow through three solution ways. Increase demand. If everyone take what they need, scarcity can disappear. Two, reduction the demand for the resource. Thus, the product used comes to lower competition level. And third one, power struggle between producers and consumers. This power balance must be achieved. In Second Life, there are producers and consumers. There are many professions here. The balance between the producer and the consumer should be maintained as a real world. Thus, it would have realized its practice in the real world here. Second Life has a sustainable economy because in this technological world paired with the real world, Real people create and analyze their profiles and workplaces here. It can eliminate social and environmental problems under the name of economic interests in these environmental social fields. Can you see the trains? As you can see, we have steam train here. The industrial revolution came to our minds and um, we put in there thank you for your listening hello everyone uh, we are the silver team and for this presentation we will focus on economy our members include uh, myself Ronaldus, uh, Dogu, Emerald, Workin and Silasu this stage has been designed to be two levels. The ground floor will show you a comparison between real life and second life relating to entrepreneurial activities, jobs and economy. The first floor, where we are seated now, will be a place where we will have a conversation and reflect on the thoughts of economy within both worlds and how they compare sustainably. Similar to real life, Second Life has a diverse and real economy where creators and consumers can purchase homes, vehicles, clothes, items, and services 
that were created by other people. In real life and SM, <coughs> there is a direct correlation between the virtual and real entrepreneur. Unlike real life in the first world, where in most cases to be an entrepreneur, you need a sum of money to start, second life is more democratic and open as only a creative mind and persistence is required. For example, SL is already being used in less wealthy countries as a way to make a better and more stable income. A study done in 2012 found that entrepreneurship activity in Second Life breeds opportunities in entrepreneurial acts in the real world. That's what the diagram shows there. This is because people who are entrepreneurs in SL acquire out-of-the-box thinking and can experiment with their creativity in different ways that real life doesn't allow. Similarly for entrepreneurs in Second Life, prior knowledge from their experiences in real life influences their innovation in Second Life as their real life experiences allowed them to find unique opportunities. The 2012 study on entrepreneurship in SL gave a few examples of entrepreneurs in SL. Brad Pratici, an architect who uses SL platform to build his prototypes and sell them. Yosina Burgess, a painter, sells her paintings in Second Life. Roy Cassini, multimedia design, created a consultancy company that attempts to merge real life and second life for, an, for a better communication between both. From this research, we can clearly see that real life entrepreneurs can benefit greatly by starting to experiment and work in the second life environment. Hi everyone, I am going to talk about the sustainable development goals. Uh, sustainable development goals are the universe, uh, universal call, uh, call to action that include this goal set by United Nations member states to be activated by the end of the 2030. Out of the uh, 17 de uh, development projects, uh, three of them implementing economic development, the sense for the and economic growth, industry innovation and infrastructure, responsibility, consumer and production. These are our sustainable development goals. Uh, unemployment and economic contraction have been a big problem for people, especially for the last hundred years. Uh, many economic crises have affected the world very much, especially the worker group. The last economic crisis that humanity has um, experience is the post-COVID-19 crisis and we are still experiencing this effect. Corona has affected humanity not only in terms of health but also in terms of economy. Uh, many workers had to leave uh, their jobs due to this global epidemic and this continued in the form of chains leaving community in an intense economic depression. Uh, after this crisis, uh, the UN set many goals and created an economic, economic development goal. Uh, this includes increasing production and enterprise, providing equal pay among uh, young, old and women, increasing education, abolishing forced labor, uh, modern slavery, protecting workers' rights, and of course, increasing commercial spots. Uh, the UN aims to achieve economic growth by reducing unemployment by applying these ideas. Um, using <coughs> Second Life, we can um, also we can also do something a little, for example, by bringing business owners and workers uh, together in a virtual environment. We can have a nice meeting between two separate groups. Um, apart from that, they can search for jobs and easily settle uh, their mutual requests between bosses and workers. I think Second Life will make a great contribution to humanity in this regard. We know how much the economy has been damaged after COVID, 
so there is a need for job employment. Global production growth has been steadily declining even before the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic. The pandemic is hitting manufacturing industries hard, causing disruptions in global value chains and product supply. Pandemic has revealed the urgent need for flexible infrastructure. The Asian Development Bank notes that despite the rapid economic growth and development that the region has experienced over the past decade, critical infrastructure in the region is far from adequate in many countries. As the acute phase of the COVID-19 crisis ends, governments will need to will need investments in infrastructure more than ever to accelerate economic recovery, create jobs, reduce poverty, and encourage productive investment. There are a lot of people who are not online than people who used to be online. For this reason, it offers some countries policy options to take advantage of the potential of digital technologies. Second life, on the other hand, allows people to gather together, communicate online, and find a place of decency. It has an impact on economy, of course. Total international official support for infrastructure, relief funds, is one of the global goals. Another example is calculating the ratio of research and developing expenditures as a proportion of GDP, so, that, so we learn the ratios. Second life, on the other hand, is like real life, because ideas can be found that will be very useful in this position. Since second life grows more and continues the real economy and employment, there is and is online, everyone can easily participate and continue the economy from here without listening to the pandemic. The ratio of research and development expenditures as a proportion of GDP also calculates the proportion of the population covered by a mobile network according to the type of technology at the same time. Introducing Second Life to all people and doing these jobs online strengthens both, both jobs and the economy. Because it is less affected by the pandemic, if we prepare all of these things carefully with simulation in the game, it will seriously benefit the economy and employment. Job losses people more to online commerce because it is known. Hi everybody, um, thank you for coming to our presentation today. Um, we are the red team. Myself, Kevin, Kagra, Pinkface and Zahar will be talking to you about our topic, society and the different um, UN SDG goals that, were, um, that relate to it. We hope you enjoyed the presentation. Um, Kagra will be our first presenter today and she will speak to you about poverty. Hi, I'm Chawla. Welcome back. Today, uh, I will talk about small poverty. The enormity and complexity of the poverty issue could endanger the social fabric, undermine economic developments and the environment and threaten political stability in many countries. The first sustainable development goal aims at poverty in all its forms everywhere. Priority actions on poverty reduction include improving access to sustainable livelihoods, entrepreneurial uh, opportunities, and productive resources, providing universal access to basic so social services, progressively developing social production systems to support those who, who cannot support themselves. Empowering people living in poverty and their organizations. At think the disproportionate impact of poverty on women. Working uh, with interest donors and recipients to allocate increased shares of ODA to poverty reduction and intensifying international cooperation for poverty reduction. So, what can we do in the metaverse to reduce poverty? Let's look at an example that was made first. Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey sold uh, his first tweet as an NFT for $2.9 million with the intention of donation to some to give directly. A charity that supplies cash to various communities in extreme poverty around the world. 
pioneering this wonderful use of the NFT, Dorsey convinced his profits to the Africa Real Life Charity Door give directly in March 2023. <coughs> now, let's talk about my opinion. We can create and sell NFTs that will attract people's attention and then donate their income. So, uh, we can create a performance tool that will always be active in the realm of second life, improving people living in poverty and their organizations. In this hall, with tickets, concerts, stand-up shows and painting expeditions can be held every day of the week. We can also donate general money from these tickets to people in need. I hope one day we can end poverty completely. Thank you for listening to me. So, my name is Kevin and I have chosen the second SDG, Zero Hunger. The aim is to assess the current situations facing us today in real life, discuss solutions, give an example of education within Second Life, and how this may be further implemented to achieve zero hunger. The world population is continuously growing, and with that, food scarcity is reaching new highs each day. People living in third world countries are amongst the highest at risk. Traditional farming methods don't always address food sustainability, which can be catastrophic, especially in times of war or natural devastation. Three steps to achieve sustainable farming are prevent, preventing environmental degradation. This can be done by altering existing farming methods, particularly that of livestock. This limits water loss, deforestation and damage to biodiversity. Taking an economic approach. This does not mean a monetary investment, but instead taking a monetary conscious technique such as family farming. The third is taking social responsibility by preventing the exploitation of farmers and providing better working conditions. This provides a higher output of food and jobs. Sustainable farming practices include conservation tillage, reduce, uh, reduce pesticide use, increased carbon uh, sequestration and integrated pest control. These activities require less water than traditional farming and can increase yields of up to 80% if done correctly. This will enable food security in the long run. Practices like natural resource conservation, crop rotation and the elimination of pesticides promote healthy soils to help crops flourish. Third world countries can even become self-sustaining with the abundance of produce provided by sustainable agriculture. So who is helping? As of now, the closest thing to this within Second Life is an, or an organization known as the Digital Farming System. They provide an interactive approach to understanding how farming systems work. In order for your digital farm to flourish, you must learn the routines and requirements, requirements which simulate the real-life necessities of a farm. But this can be taken further. Charities can be set up to allow for various pop-up workshops to travel around remote regions affected by food scarcity. This would be a teach a person to fish, or in this case, farm approach. People would learn within the digital realm, which would require far less time and money than being taught on a real life farm. That's all, thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Pink Liz, and I'm going to introduce Goal 3, Good Health and Wellbeing. Ensuring healthy lives and promoting well-being at all ages is essential to sustainable development. This goal's main purpose is protection from disease is not only fundamental to survival, but it enables opportunity for everyone and strengthens economic growth and wealth. Goal 3 cover a wide range of issues including reduction of maternal mortality, ending all preventable deaths under five years of age, fight communicable diseases, support research development and universal access to affordable vaccines and medicines, increase health financing and support health workforce in developing countries. The main point that what we should discuss is what can we do in the metaverse universe. In my opinion, metaverse can change everything. For instance, doctors and health workers can exchange ideas for people who do not get enough benefit from health services. Thus, they can easily offer ideas from each country. Various virtual medical discussion uh, 
uh, environment can be created in order to produce appropriate treatments. Health workers may have a hard time to go to a country where they want to treat diseases. This goal, which aims to ensure that every citizen of the country receives health care, can also provide comfort for doctors and health workers. Metaverse will be able to contribute to increasing the efficiency and quality of medical education with benefits such as ease of access, saving money, and time for health workers and health worker candidates to improve themselves and learn. In conclusion, every people in this world deserve to be cared. Every health workers deserve to be applauded, so all we can do for them is to introduce this goal and help them. Thank you for your attention. My chosen UN SDG goal is education. Today I will speak to you about new education influences on our society. I will also be speaking about the effects of COVID-19 on our education system um, and how it is relevant to our world today. So education he heavily ties into the topic of society as education plays a great role in the formation of communities. It can be suggested that education is the key source of community formation. Local schools educate children who become friends. They get hired at local establishments and create bonds with one another. Education is essential in developing a strong society. The COVID-19 pandemic caused a massive crisis within the education sector globally and will be during its two-year period. Children and young adults um, all over the globe were unable to attend their classes due to school closures. 150 million children were unable to attend over 50% of their classes, and it is estimated that those children will lose um, $17, excuse me, $17 trillion combined over their professional lifetime. Online education has also had a massive impact on students' mental health and the inability to socialize and be physically present themselves in classes proved problematic. Studies show that many students prefer physical learning over online classes due to their interactability. Although many suffered um, great disadvantages during the COVID-19 pandemic, online education prospered greatly. In the past, online education was a medium that wasn't heavy, heavily utilized. Due to this health crisis and isolation periods, online studies prospered and developed. Online modules became popular and introduced new ways of learning that gave a sense of freshness to the education system. Online learning benefits students that live far from school, people with disabilities that have difficulty com commuting, or people with high anxiety that prefer to stay within their home to stay comfortable, or even people uh, that can't afford, afford childcare, etc. So in my research, I found that education is key to human development, not only necessary for biological development of the human brain, but it, but it is also essential for human prosperity and professional growth. Education ties into a topic of society on a great level. All people, all people require adequate education to prosper within the competitive world. Society is structured around the educational system and children go to school and gain knowledge that will later help them, um, help them in college or equip them with basic skills to aid them to prefer, uh, perform their jobs. Higher education and learning when um, within other programs such as work experience, apprentice, apprenticeships, smaller scale diplomas, all aid individuals in gaining more experience to acquire better jobs or gain a job that they are passionate about. Um, thank you. Hello everyone. Uh, today I will talk about uh, sustainable development and wildlife and general equality. Gender equality is not just a fundamental human right, uh, it is a necessary foundation for a peaceful, prosperous and sustainable world. Ten years of progress has been made in gender equality, but the world is not on track to achieve gender equality by 
The aims of gender equality are clear and unambiguous, and all forms and of discrimination against of all uh, women and girls everywhere. The promote the full and effective participation of women at all levels of decision making in political, economic, and is institutional life and uh, equal opportunities for leadership and the empowerment of women. Things are, are a little different for the metaverse. There is no discrimination in the metaverse uh, world and every, everyone has equal rights. In the metaverse, women can do anything. For example, individuals who enter second life can create family or male avatars at the moment. In other words, women can create male avatars and men can create female avatars. In metaverse, women can do what men can do in real life, and men can do what women can do. This is also an in indicator of equality, since her real identity is not known. Everyone can ex express herself more easily and produce more pro productive works. For example, metaverse can also be successful in women jobs that normally have more job opportunities for men. Because Metaverse offers this job opportunity and more to women and men equally. For example, if a man is preferred more at the heat of a company, this job employment is given to both sides in the virtual world. While there is inequality in wakes in real life, the metaverse is equality disparity. Women normally uh, do the same work and earn a lower salary than men. Metaverse also shows the equality of men and women in, in this regard. Women get the same salary as men get paid. In short, the world of the metaverse treats everyone equally and fairly, regardless of gender of the person. Thank you for listening to me. Hi everyone, welcome to our presentation about sustainable development goals in society. I am Red Felix and I am a leader. Today, I am going to talk about gender equality. Now, if you are ready, I can start. Firstly, sustainable development is the plan for human beings that is planned while being sustained towards <coughs> nature systems, the economy and the resources and the ecosystem services on which it depends. I would like to touch on the issue of gender equality within the scope of sustainable development projects. First of all, gender equality has certain goals. We can eliminate gender discrimination in second life. For instance, it doesn't matter what gender the avatars are. In second life, everyone should be able to wear the clothes they want. If a woman wants to wear a tie, she should. If a, man, if a man wants to wear high health, he should. These are not important. The important thing is to be human and find out what we can do. We should raise awareness of people and do activities in second life about it. It has been determined in the reports that women are more interested in metaverse than 
Men. What many of the metaverse companies are run by men? The report also states that metaverse has the potential to improve the global economy and create equal opportunities for all. Our priority, our priority is to create and maintain an equal and fair world. Thank you for attention and uh, Eve turn. Hello everyone, my name is Eve and I will be talking about the Sustainable Deve Development Goal 4, which is quality education. This goal aims to facilitate inclusive and quality education for all people, promoting lifelong er learning opportunities. Here on the screen are 10 targets that the United Nations have set to achieve by the year 2030. They include increase the supply of qualified teachers in developing countries, free primary and secondary education, equal access to primary education, equal access to affordable, technical, vocational and higher education, increase in the number of people with relevant skills for financial success, eliminate all discrimination in education, universal literacy and numeracy, Education for Sustainable Development and Global, global citizen, Citizenship. Build and upgrade inclusive and safe schools and expand higher education scholarships for developing countries. Why quality education is important. Societal development. Quality education plays an important role in societal development, improving the well-being of everyone in society so that they can reach their potential. The success of society is linked to the well-being of every citizen. Quality of life. Access to education is crucial to improve quality of life by equipping people with knowledge, tools and skills in order to shape their own lives and contribute to the lives of others. Innovation. Providing quality education fosters imagination and innovation. It promotes critical thinking. It equips students to find solutions and take action to improve the world. Innovation is vital for addressing social and global challenges. Prosperity. Quality education is pivotal for economic growth and job creation, ensuring a high quality education for all, mitigating factors that hinder educational achievement will lead to global prosperity and well-being. How can Second Life help with providing quality education? There are many ways in which Second Life can aid in providing quality education. For example, to increase the supply of qualified teachers in developing countries, Second Life could act as a learning community to educate people in developing countries to become teachers. Another example would be to teach students directly by providing a classroom setting built here in Second Life, which can be accessed by all. These spaces would be informative and interactive, making the education process collaborative and gives an opportunity for the students to engage with one another in a fun, safe environment. I think that Second Life is an excellent platform that can be utilized to provide quality education in a very sustainable manner. Thank you all for listening. I will now pass you on to my colleague, Elena. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Fububi of Ilman. Today uh, I want to talk about reducing inequalities.
The aim of reducing inequality is to reduce inequality within and between countries. Addressing growing inequalities requires the adoption of robust policies that promote economic participation of all, regardless of gender or race. As a solution, it ensures the regulation of financial markets and institutions, uh, developing a system and direction for a direct investment to areas where it is most needed. By 2030, it aims to ensure and strengthen the social, economic and political participation of all, regardless of age, gender, disability, race, regulation, economic or other status. It aims to provide equal opportunity and reduce inequality, including by ending discriminatory laws and policies, and by promoting appropriate laws and policies in this context. On the Second Life platform, online shopping centers can be established to reduce class discrimination and reduce inequalities. In this way, I aim to eliminate the reach for discussion among people. I can build a restaurant for people in need that can use in their second life. I can create a support area where people with income in a political social. I want to create a swimming pool, sports equipment, and coffee environment where they can meet new people in this sports area. Even though I can't do anything in real life, in second life, I want to do many activities to reduce inequality. Thank you. Justin. Can you hear me? Hello, I am Myra. The Sustainable Development Goal Ending Poverty focuses on ending all form of poverty all over the world. I would say that many people today are deprived of meeting their most basic human needs. By 2030, the goal is to eradicate extreme poverty for everyone. Everyone certainly definite as those living on less than dollar one twenty five a day by twenty thirty it aims to at least hold the proportion of men women and children of all age living in poverty or its dim dimension according to national definitions by twenty thirty all men women particularly the poor and disadvantaged have access to economic resources, access to basic service and land and other types of property. First of all, I want to solve the housing problem. Then I can build nursing homes for the elderly and children to meet their basic needs and organize different activity activities there. We can build online shopping, must and power in second life. I can establish libraries for the education of children and this way, children who are depri deprived of education can have equal rights. Design an internet program for them to read the books. As a result, so even though I can't do anything in the real world, I want to end, to end poverty in the second life. Listen for me. Thank you. Okay. One tournament I will talk about health and will be in. Target. Anyone can help us achieve the global goals. We must use these 13 goals to create action that promotes health and will be for all. We do think Mother did. Can we use the global maternal mortality rate to below 70 per 100,000 years by? 2030. Fight the communicable diseases. 
and the epidemics of AIDS, tuberculosis, malaria, and neglected tropical diseases by 2030, and we must combat hepatitis, waterborne diseases, and other infectious diseases. Subs substance and addic addiction must be not treated. The prevention and treatment of sub substance abuse, including narcotic drug addiction, and harmful, harmful use of alcohol needs to be stanched. Um, this is the final of our course today, and we are going to uh, wrap up here. With uh, John is going to lead the wrap up session. Thank you, Magra. Delighted to do so. Okay, let me start by echoing uh, Magra's congratulations to all of you um, student presenters today. I think now you have a sense of just how difficult it can be to put together um, and deliver a presentation like this in a virtual world. But you all managed it. You all produced uh, sparkling sets and bills. Um, you all presented your slides, and you all spoke very, very well. So over the course of the last 10 or 12 weeks or so, um, we've hit you with a huge amount of new information. We brought you into a new environment. Um, you had to get used to learn and learn how to navigate through this environment with your avatars. You had to learn how to build. You had to meet a lot of new colleagues. So as students, you were meeting friends from, new friends, I hope, from Turkey and from Ireland, and maybe even from further afield. You were meeting a lot of new tutors and lecturers and support staff. And we introduced you to a range of new ideas, I hope. So if you think back to presentations on Marshall McLuhan and his approach to the tools that we use, Val's presentation on digital citizenship and meta-literacy and meta-modernism, and Gentle's presentation, <coughs> excuse me, um, on the community of Virtual Ability Island and some of the insights we got from her two um, special speakers who joined with us and shared some of their experiences and their, their rationale for becoming a member of a society or a community in Second Life. So there's a lot there for you to have taken in and to absorb and I hope you can continue to do that and reflect on some of the ideas that we've presented you with over the coming weeks and months. Overall, I think what we hope you can take away from this is a sense of how in the future human beings are going to get, have to get used to lots of different ways of communicating and lots of different ways of working together. You all touched upon this, or pretty much all of you in your presentations, the importance of virtual worlds um, and virtual communication. And one of the overriding objectives of this module was to give you a genuine and practical experience of that. And that really was the purpose behind asking you to make um, a presentation as part of a team. It was to really get you to understand how, what it's like to work together with people virtually. So I, I think all of us hope that that has been a positive experience for you and that you've acquired some very useful skills along the way that you'll be able to implement, hopefully in the future of your courses in, in CHA and in TU Dublin, but also in your future, in your future professional lives when you start working. So with that, um, I'm going to invite Lucena to stand up um, and take my place and close us out for this evening. You've all shown how anyone can use Second Life to teach and persuade by creating three-dimensional presentations that are beautiful and effective. So we thank you for that. Thank you, Liz. So 
that's all for tonight uh, and i'll see you around thank you